Hi, this is 365801 and this is a manga haul video for the month of January 2021. Hello and this is the first manga haul video that I'm doing for the year 2021, which sounds very futuristic. Um, I am very pleased. I have a small, small stack here, which is exactly the same size as last January's. Um, I'm going to, once again, try and restrict my buying, restrict my spending and limit myself to a certain number each month. And for some unknown reason, it's always been around seven. And so once again, I'm going to try and limit it to seven. So I actually have seven here today. Um, although I would be a liar <laughs> if I did not also mention the fact that um, some came in the post today, but I haven't opened them yet as a means of saying I haven't received them. <laughs> But it does mean that it's definitely going to be something for next month. Um, so yeah, I have a couple of little packages sitting there. Oh dear. Um, but yes, no, only seven this month. Only seven. If you are interested to see what I got, stick around and we'll go through some of my purchases. So the first title I have to show you is not a BL title, but it is one that I've had on my to get if you see it for a good price list. And by good price, I mean really good price, like really low, because this is a yen press title and they traditionally tend to be a bit more expensive than others. Uh, US, it's $13 and 17 Canadian so probably in the UK mm, quite a bit pricey probably around 11 which is not too bad this is Caterpillar Girl and Bad Texture Boy this is by Sanzo um, this was an interesting one I saw the cover and I thought it looked interesting and I also thought that it looked kind of cute and it could go either of two ways that it's really dark and a bit depressing and a bit scary or a bit horror or it could be dead cute and fluffy and sweet and I wasn't entirely sure which side of the coin it would fall on and that's what intrigued me. Now when I first started looking at it I did think perhaps that it might uh, have shades of Jingai San no Yome which was that really weird but also kind of cute odd not quite BL, but kind of BL-esque monster boy-wife anime. I don't know how I'm gonna, I don't know how you would explain it. Non-human creature's wife. So a Yonkoma manga that they made into an anime about a boy who has been uh, assigned a mysterious creature for a um, wife or a husband. And so he's the wife. Anyway, <clears throat> the idea of a creature or a monster of some sort being your partner. And so I thought, oh, okay, maybe that's what it is. And I have to say, the art is very cute and a bit odd as well. So it starts off very straightforward. And then the artwork starts to get a bit scary. And then almost instantly, it's cute, funny. Um... On the back, the blurb is, beautiful, smart and kind Suzume Kikuo is perfect in every way, the girl of anyone's dreams. But when she asks out her socially awkward childhood friend Akane, his response is a shocker. You're too perfect. What's a girl to do except transform into a giant caterpillar and try, try again? So it starts off um, fairly normal for the first couple of pages and then it gets a bit dark and kind of a bit sinister when Susume goes missing and of course Akane starts to get a little bit concerned and then all of a sudden there's this giant caterpillar who's talking to him and being like hey it's me and then you're like oh this is a bit scary and it could be horror and then as soon as the car goes past the caterpillars are like oh can you pick me up I'm really scared and the facial expressions of Susume as the caterpillar is just the sweetest thing but as with all good Japanese manga, what it appears to be at first um, thought 
ends up being the slow descent into horror or madness or social inquisition and that's exactly what this is there's a lot of um really traumatic experiences really sad experiences really emotional experiences it's deeper and more psychological than um just the front cover might suggest and it was a bit of a ride i have to say emotionally and you are instantly captivated by susume as the caterpillar and how she came to be in that way so um and of course you're kind of rooting for them and then in the end you're kind of like no it's it's a bit of a sad ending i want to say I, but at the same time it's like oh okay then you just kind of accept it it's a one shot it's a fast and easy read i read it really quickly um so i do kind of recommend it as a read but i'm not too sure if i'd recommend it to buy and i'm not sure if i'll keep it in my collection it's just a very odd one but i'm glad that i read it and i finally got a chance to i managed to get this and pick it up for only four pounds so absolute bargain yeah caterpillar girl and bad texter boy i don't know why he's bad texter he's socially awkward but that's about it <sighs> yeah i'm not too sure you end up rooting for anyone mm. it's an interesting one definitely interesting now the next one is the second of my non-bl titles and it is one that I am so incredibly excited to have in my collection. And this is one that I will definitely keep in my collection. And that I also got for a really good price. I think this was around four or five, something like that. Uh, so, wow, was I happy to get it for such a good price. When it first came out a few years ago, I wanted it because I want everything by Nakamura Asumiko. But um, I was like, mm, it's not BL and I'm mostly wanting BL stuff, so I'll focus on that. But when this was up on eBay for a really cheap price, I just thought, snap it up and give it a go because I've heard it's really good. Um, I have seen it in Japanese. I've kind of flicked through it in Japanese, but because it wasn't something that I was terribly um, invested in, spending the time to translate and often... Uh, Nakamura's does not have furigana, which is the uh, little hiragana next to the kanji that helps you to understand. So you have to just know your kanji, and I just don't know my kanji. So I never really took the time to sit down and properly have a look at it. Uh, so this was completely coming at it from a fresh perspective. I, I didn't really know. I, I knew that there might be some yuri elements to it. Um, and that's exactly what it is. It's got like one yuri story that's it so i wouldn't say it's it's got yuri elements because there are, it's only one story but it's a great story so ugh. but it's nakamura so of course it would be uh, why would i expect it to be anything else well there was one story that i read in one of her works in japanese that was definitely not good but anyway uh, that was uh, <laughs> was a bit too much for me this one is a series of short stories um all based around the train network system around tokyo but out into the countryside as well and down towards hakone and it is very clear that nakamura has a real love and a real affection for this train network and the trains on it and the people that work it and the atmosphere that it has. If you've ever been to Japan and, and been on the trains and been outside of the major cities, gone somewhere a little bit more rural and had to change lines and change trains and maybe even um, stations walk from one to the other, then you'll have the sense that some places have a different atmosphere to others and different train networks and lines have different atmospheres it's very odd but um i totally connected because it just reminded me of um, where i lived and the fact that there was different train lines and different networks and there's a trolley car and if i if i wanted to get from here to there i could take this one or i could 
take that one at this time and change that one but it's cheaper going on that one and it might take a little bit longer but the train cars are just so much nicer it's just all these little details that I lived in my lived experience it, I know that she's um, almost portraying through these stories and they're all different stories there's a story about uh, a husband who likes model trains about a girl whose partner has got married and so ends up finding a new love um, about a girl who's a bit of a pickpocket oh I loved that one though it was great because I was like convinced at the start like oh who's this mysterious you know train attendant who's telling her off and oh it's so good and the man that she, she meets on the train and his wife and all these lovely little vignettes and they're so well constructed well done beautiful artwork brilliant dialogue and of course translated by my queen jocelyn allen oh dempa just outdid themselves with this it's great quality it's strong and sturdy beautiful paper i know i'm going to be able to keep this and love it and reread it for years to come it's a really good one. I 100% recommend Made in Railways. Go out and get a copy if you can. Oh, it's so good. If you like Classmates, then I would say give this a go because um, it's Nakamura Sumiko and, well, she's, she's a queen. And I didn't realise this, but I had to recheck and it turns out she's just a little bit... She's around my age, which makes me feel... <sighs> well underachieving <laughs> life <laughs> my goodness is she a genius i love her work so much so yeah um 100 recommend made in railways by dimpa now it might surprise you to find out that when it comes to the work that i brought into the collection this month the two non-bl titles i read straight away <laughs> And everything else, I was like, oh, I'll read that. I will read that. I will read that. But I never did. Um, the next one in front of you is Missing Road. And this is a Shushu Sakurai title. This is by Drama Queen. This is one of the few titles I need to get for Drama Queen. I'm going to keep saying that every time I eke away at it. Um, this is lovely artwork inside. Beautiful colour insert. Um... Shushu Sakurai has a particular style. I've got a few of uh, their works. I'm not sure if they're the same person that did um, Stupid Love Comedy because their Shu 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 is spelt S-Y-U and not S-H-U. If they're the same person, I don't know. Their art styles looks very different. But I kind of am intrigued to find out if Stupid Love Comedy's Shu Shu Sakurai is the same as Junk and Missing Road's Shu Shu Sakurai. So if you know that, um let me know this is from 2010 november um and i do have i think everything else bl by shushu sakurai so i uh, i'm looking forward to reading this one i'll put it in a tbr for something in the future so i'm not going to read it straight away but i'm really pleased to have another drama queen title ticked off my list and the amazing thing was, I got it for such a good price. I think it was around £10, maybe maybe 10 or 11 something like that. So uh, I did really well getting this one, Missing Road. I was so pleased to add it to the collection. So yeah, I just checked and it was £10.90 that I got Missing Road. Uh, and both the previous two were both £4 each. So that was a really good bargain for both of them very happy. Anyway, the next one is not so much of a bargain, <laughs> as you might expect. Crimson Snow, which I've had such a difficulty getting. This is Hori Tomoki. This is an old blue title on the large imprint size. Um, a Yakuza story. Um, looks very interesting, kind of set in um, Yakuza slash traditional Japanese stores. Um, the artwork inside looks quite nice, but a little bit dark, heavy-handed with the lines. Um, it'll be interesting. I'm a bit... Hmm, Yakuza stories are hit and miss. You know, when you've read some absolute classics, 
then some Yakuza stories don't really hit it. So I'm interested to see about Crimson Snow. It looks quite interesting. This was £8, but then I had to pay quite a bit for shipping. Well, not quite a bit. £7. So that's something to do with, most likely, Brexit. <laughs> Which is annoying as hell. Um, because... Getting something that is low cost in America shipped over, usually if it's going through the International Shipping Postal Service for the eBay, it's going to cost me something in the region of 15 to $45 um, or pounds even, which is worse. Um, but sometimes Thrift Books will just send it to you at a low price and it used to be that that low price was around £5 and more often now that price is going up to seven which is two pounds extra added on just because politicians have done stuff so yeah it's annoying but there you go so i did get this for 15 pounds which is still actually really low uh, for what it's going for i went through my ebay watch list and just deleted everything that i have been watching that i now have in my possession and this was like 50, 60, 70 dollars. It's like ridiculous. So I'm very happy to be able to have this for just 15 pounds in my collection now. And I will quite happily read this for Buzzword Readathon in a couple of days time. Um, because it has crimson in it. So I will put it on my TBR. Uh, not like Missing Road, but I'll put this on a TBR and try and read it straight away just so I've uh, keeping up to date with what I'm actually reading and bringing into the collection. Well, now, if this wasn't just a bargain of the century, Kaim uh, Tachibana, this is Boy's Love, and this is a Doki Doki title. This is so expensive. It's so expensive. Why? Why? It's a Doki Doki title. Get out of here. It's not worth it. Um... <laughs> And yet, uh, it, that's how much it's going for. This is obviously second hand, so I'm quite happy to get it second hand. From 2009, so, you know, it's quite an age. And it's not in absolute perfect condition. It does curl up slightly on the edges. But if I think some heavy books and some pressing will hopefully um, get the curl out of it. But I've had my eyes on this title for a long time. Uh, when it's actually up, very often uh, you can find Kaim Tachibana's work, you can find a boy's love copy, but it's German or it's French. You're not going to get uh, an English language copy and not one in the UK anyway. So one coming up on eBay, I was like, <gasps> which is what I'm usually like when something is a rarity to come up and I see it. And even more so if I don't already have it in the collection. So when this came up for, um, yeah, for sale, I was like, oh, how much am I going to have to pay for this? Am I going to have to pay £20? 25 How far would I be willing to be pushed to get a copy? And I got it for £7.50 plus postage, so £9.03. Woo! Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hold the applause, it's fine. I am absolutely overjoyed to have this another Doki Doki title off the list. It's slower and slower and smaller and smaller and oh, it's just uh, eking out these titles. Um, hopefully at one point in time this year I will be able to say I have everything from a, a one particular publisher. But Boys Love adds to that Doki Doki list that I now have, takes off one from the list that I need to get and I'm very pleased about it. Now on to um, the last couple that I purchased and this is Intense by Kyung Ha Yi, uh, Volume 1, Night on the Red Road. So in terms of being a buzzword, it could be used for uh, this month coming, February, with colours because it is red. So I could give this a wee read and I might just do that if of course I have time because it's a big TBR. Because I enjoyed the Kyung Ha Yi title that I read in January. That was the very first title and that was Dreams of the Days. Dream of the Days. Um, and I actually really enjoyed it. I liked the 
artwork. I liked the characters. I was obviously a little bit disappointed. No, no 3P. I do enjoy a good threesome. But this one I know is a four volume series and it's a little bit depressing and it's probably, a, is it a Yakuza one as well? Mafia, Mafia, yes. So like, I don't know what Korean Mafia would be. Do they have a name as well? I might find out in this. So yeah, it's um, maybe exploitation and things like that. Like I said, some Yakuza stories I just don't like as much because it's just so hor horrifying. Um, so yeah. Uh, I might give this a wee read just to find out. I have to say though, this is a net comics and I am looking to pick up a lot more net comics and Korean manhwa over 2021 just because um, I, I didn't pick up a lot of net comics at all in 2020. Um, I picked up a few in 2019 for sure but not very many in 2020 and that's like a little gap in my collection. I almost just ignored net comics for the whole of 2020 so there could have been bargains out there and I didn't get them because I wasn't looking. So yeah, net comics is one I'm going to be looking at and the quality of this, I love it. It's such good quality. The paper is good quality. The cover is just feels so nice. Really lovely matte finish. So yeah, I'm going to have to pick up Intense. I know quite a few people have read this and said it's good, but I really don't know um, anything about it other than Mafia, Kyung Ha Yi, and it looks good. So I'm looking forward to it. Now I got Intense Volume 1 for six ninety, which is a really good buy. And I got this one, which is His House Volume 1. Both volume ones, which is fantastic because it means I can at least start the story. If I never get the rest of the volumes, I at least know how it started. Having a series in my collection without volume one is so annoying. Um, so yeah, I got this His House Volume 1 uh, by Hajin Yu. And this is $7.99. Also, Net Comics. This one doesn't have a matte finish. It has a nice shiny finish. Um, and it is lovely. It looks great. And it looks a bit quirky and funny. I do like the the style that they've done. I've seen on the back of a couple of uh, net comics. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. I know it's three volumes, so I'm going to have to pick up the other three volumes. But this is almost all um, colour inside. Whereas Intense and um, Dreams of the Days and a few of my other net comics ones are... Um, grey tone. They're very much like obviously done on the computer so like webcomic style but this has been put together it's all almost all colour it's amazing. So I'm gonna look forward to reading this but I will not be reading it straight away. This is you might think she she did that on purpose she went out of her way to get this on purpose. Well maybe I did. Uh, for the buzzword readathon in May um, there are very few options for the buzzword, which is house or home. And um, I don't have many BLs that have house or home that are print copies. There are a few titles on Futekia that I'll be able to read, but that's going to be a really short TBR and recommendations list because honestly, there's not a lot. Um, but I knew this existed. And so just on a whim, I thought, oh, well, I'll have a wee look to see. And so $7.99, I thought that's an actual really good price for these. They're usually a bit more expensive because they are good quality. So in the U US, this is $21.99, so it is more expensive. So for $7.99, that's actually really good in the UK. Um, I think I can maybe get each of the volumes, if they're in stock, for around £12 or £13, maybe. Um... I'll keep an eye out for some bargains, but that might be what has to happen to be able to get them into the collection. Um, this is obviously, I think, the same person who has done, if I'm right, yes, Totally Captivated, which I managed to get a full set of, but I need to get the extras for that as well. So, another Net Comics one, another one that I will have added to the collection to now look to complete. <laughs> so, um, it looks good and it's something that I don't need to worry about until May, which is nice. I feel like I've given myself a reprise. Um, like, don't worry about this TBR that you're bringing in because it's 
months away. It's fine. It looks good, interesting, and full of colour. So I'm happy to have it in the collection. So that is everything that I picked up for the month of January. Shh, just ignore those other parcels over there in the corner. Shh. Um, other good parcels though. Other oh, such good parcels. Um, <laughs> Boys Love by Kai and Tachibana. Missing Road, Shushushu Sakurai. Um, Crimson Snow. We've got Intense and His House. Both of those are net comics. And a couple of non-BL titles. Maiden Railways and uh, Caterpillar Girl and Bad Texture Boy. I'm not going to recommend Bad Texture Boy to everyone. But if you like weird, odd, psychological um, stories, if you're into that, then yeah, you might really like that. Give it a go. If you can pick up at the library, so much the better. Give it a try that way. Um, if you can access libraries at this time, as I cannot. But Maiden Railways, as the non-BL in this group, 100% recommend. Love it loved it so much so yeah um it's a nice little amount i didn't spend too much i got some really good bargains as i said those non-bl titles both four pounds four pounds so um and some of the rare titles as well added to the collection so i got three this month rare titles white whales as i call them and then two net comics ones, which are usually very expensive, but I got for um, $7.99, $6.90. So good prices all around. And I'm really holding back, guys. I know I'm, I'm <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, but I'm honestly holding myself in. I've been listening to the astrology podcast and they have basically said, hold on, keep your money close and tight. For the next couple of months and then you'll you'll be a little bit more relaxed later on in the year this is the time to not spend if you can help it so i'm heeding the advice of the astrologers <laughs> last year they did me well i listened to their podcast and i do shout out to the astrology podcast um it really did help me to have better mental health if i'm honest this has got nothing to do with my, my collection other than it really does help me to think about uh, what's coming and they're so the astrology was so literal last year in 2020 so that when they said on this day something really shitty is going to happen I girded my loins and on that day when this the shitty thing happened I didn't have the jarring effect of it being a shock and a surprise as well as it being shitty so um 100 percent recommend having a wee listen to the astrology podcast and uh, letting that kind of not necessarily guide you but forewarn you and to be forewarned is to be forearmed and so this January when things have been really crazy in this um, world uh, having already heard from the podcast that certain things of certain kind of nature might be happening on certain days um, it really felt like, oh well, they, they called it, they nailed it, they did really well and I'm not quite so shocked. It's not still reverberating within me, that shock. It's more like, wow, I did not see that coming, yet I knew that today was going to be a kind of, this kind of a day. So yeah, <laughs> nothing to do with, nothing to do with manga, but there you go. That's how I've been coping for 2020 and into 2021. Um, but yeah, they said don't spend your money, so I'm not going to. So don't expect a huge one. I guarantee, okay, I'm, maybe don't guarantee, but I hope it will be less than seven or at least seven. Um, yeah, probably seven next month. <laughs> I'm doing the mental calculations in my head. So yeah, um, a good selection for this month and a nice, interesting selection. And I'm very happy with it. So yeah, um, if you've read any of these, uh, especially the ones you, that I haven't read, can you let me know what do you think of them? Intense, His House, uh, Missing Road, Boys Love and Crimson Snow. Those are all the BLs and I didn't read them. But the other ones, if you've read them and you have an opinion on them as well, I'd like to know because uh, do you like Maiden Railways as much as me? It's so good, so good. And also uh, Caterpillar Girl was an odd one. Um, I kind of want to know. No one else has really spoken about it. It is an older title, so 
Um, maybe it's just been forgotten. Yen press. Kind of difficult to get hold of now. So yeah, let me know what you think of these titles in the comments below. And um, if you're interested in more of these videos, uh, consider subscribing, thumbs up, liking all those good things. And I make videos on BL, Boys Love, Yaoi, Shonen I, Male Male Romance, all that good thing. So if you like that, consider subscribing. Um, <laughs> every day is a BL day. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.